good morning friends so today we will have a short introduction about what is literature so before entering into our syllabus and all those details it is critically important for a student of literature to know what constitute literature what are its main functions what are its genres what are the different kinds of literature so all those things are very important for us to know so this would be a short introduction and uh, yeah if you want you know you can ask your you know you can add your observations and all in the group okay make it a very you know interactive one since we have this kind of confinement to have all I means regular mode classes we are doing this online so first it is critically important to know what is literature generally what happens people go to you know their textbooks their syllabus and start reading poetry fiction and all those things then in the last moment they post this question what is literature so but i want you to have some elaboration some kind of an understanding what constitute literature so that's what i am going to do in this class maybe we will try to record short videos of 10 yeah 20 minutes and then later on we will move on to you know the further sections first of all literature the english word literature actually comes from latin word literatura literatura okay means writing sorry for my latin pronunciation i don't know it's exact latin pronunciation but its spelling is given that this i have taken from uh, m h abraham's glossary of literary terms so it is commonly used since 18th century okay this term became current and widely used by different people for Uh, signifying something called uh, literature something called you know the the all writing in different languages so in 18th century it's used for writings in any imaginative writing imaginative writing imagination right imagination means uh, you are creating some picture in your mind which is not real for example i can imagine a world than this real world means where everything is possible where there is a uh, for example i am imagining in my poetry i am writing a poem about a seashore where there are different uh, um um uh, means people and uh, a small house or you know i am enjoying in that beach for example okay i can imagine that even though we are in bihar right now we can imagine about a beach and we are uh, playing in that beach or swim swimming and do it means or you are in the middle of a forest and there you are friend with a lion in a real life it's not possible for you to be friend with a you know an animal right a wild animal like a lion or tiger or anything like that but in your imaginative world in movies and in poems it's possible for you to have that kind of a companion that kind of a friendship so that is what is imagination okay you are imagining something so an imaginative writing in poetry prose fiction or don't worry we will have a separate discussion one more class on this next class would be the genres of literature so there we will discuss what's poetry what's fiction what's drama okay within some the minimum sense giving you the minimum sense possible but in the expanded sense you know earlier it was exclusively used for this kind of writing but nowadays it has a the word literature has a wider sense it is applicable to all subject even though your friend is studying history honors or you know science you could say his books are also literature the science literature history literature 
okay or computer literature even for computer the books on computer also you can use the word literature that is now nowadays widely used okay but the specific sense is imaginative writing in poetry prose fiction and drama but in the larger sense it will be applicable this term can be applied to all writings whether it is on on uh, science history philosophy computer science whatever whatever okay so that is an expanded sense of the word literature so we have in this thing one is literature comes from the latin word literatura and uh, which means writing and it became predominantly used from 18th century onwards then the two meaning of literature in the specific sense it is used any imaginative writing in prose fiction or drama okay then in the expanded sense in the larger sense it is used to signify or to denote or to it is applied any writings you can talk about any writing in philosophy history science whatever subject doesn't matter but is it is a written thing the term is applied uh, okay so you can use literature there now we will move on to next slide functions of literature why why do we write literature what is the function of what is the uses of literature if you elaborate if you try to understand you know human being i think the history of literature would be as old as human being the first human being himself started writing some kind of poetry some kind of imagination for example adam and eve adam is actually you know thinking about his future and is you know thinking that you know uh, he will have a different life once he is outcasted from the heaven it means outcasted from the paradise so there you know the thinking the imagination imagination is as old as human being so literature is also as old as human being even though it didn't come into an explicit form of writing even we have earlier we had oral literature okay means there is no writing form but people you know chanted songs and they exchanged it to from one generation to another generation all those things we will discuss in the in our next class about the genres of literature first function is uh, management of feelings means literature is in order to give you a solace in order to give you a satisfaction from some of the feelings for example if you have a clear pain or a happiness you will scribble down some lines some poems right or you will write a story means it's basically management of the feeling that is i am talking about the earlier version of you know there are different and lot of theories about literature what are the functions of literature okay so it is this idea of management of feeling literature has to manage literature has to help to satisfy one's feeling is very traditional one it is there in ancient greece itself uh, for example aristotle you know a greek scholar writer philosopher so his idea of catharsis he says once you see some drama that greek period was predominantly a period of drama okay epic writings were also there but it is predominantly a period of drama so that once you see a drama you will have you will go through the feelings emotional pains and you know of the character for example if i am watching a drama of uh, yeah for example you can take any drama okay you might have you can imagine any drama that you have so in that you know the villain the protagonist 
the protagonist kills the villain villain is very crooked you know very cheater kind of very cruel guy so he killed lot of people but in the last moment the protagonist the hero of the drama kills that villain who is a representation of or we say symbol of all kind of bad feeling then you will have a sense of satisfaction how now after that you, you feel free so that is an emotional you know relaxation that you are getting from reading or watching a movie yeah you can just think about a movie right that is management of feeling one example in the classical in from our indian tradition this valmiki ramayana the valmiki ramayana you know is uh, uh, you know it's the, according to one uh, you know tradition of history one source some sources when two dogs were trying to have some you know sexual intercourse or have to have some romantic relationship one hunter killed that dog so that led to the creation of ramayana right the ramayana so that is extreme pain extreme pain that vedavyasa experience led him into writing one of the greatest epic in our tradition so that is pain you are while you are reading literature you are getting some kind of solace relaxation of your feeling and once you are uh, watching the movie you are getting this kind of relaxation or once you are writing also you are getting some kind of relaxation the relationship between the author and the uh, you know the reader that has to be discussed i think that will be discussed in, in our coming classes maybe in your uh, when you are studying criticism now you know here it is management of field another one is another function of uh, literature according to some scholars it is didacticism didactic didactic means intended for intended to give instruction you know religious literature from a religious point of view a literature is meant to give instruction to the believer or to people to guide them into a very straight path for example or you could uh, talk about <coughs> children's literature in children's literature also we are giving them this uh, moral stories and all so that they can learn something from that now for example we are telling them story of uh, you know a, a hare and tortoise their competition yeah. and the arrogant proud feeling yeah. of uh, uh, some of the you know so in order to correct that you know in order to correct this kind of bad feeling in order to educate them we are having literature that is didactic literature means intended for instruction then we have you know in religious tradition this didacticism you know literature is in order to guide people into good thing they want to learn good thing what is ideal practice what is good practice in order to learn that you know that is didactic literature didactic didacticism means intended to give instruction and then we have aestheticism aestheticism is art for art sake means literature is for literature sake it doesn't have any other function other than that itself means if something is independent it doesn't want to move from it uh, means it is complete in itself i am in a class please come after some time okay so aestheticism is actually a movement in europe in 19th century scholars like oscar wilde writers like oscar wilde they were very much you know they always going behind this pleasure principle and they got bored you know if you are writing something you have to write it for to good to you know uh, to teach people something actually oscar wilde was an you know you no know, homosexual 
his sexuality he went to jail for his you know sexual behavior and all so he began to challenge this idea means there are some other scholars also but oscar wilde is one of the predominant figure in this area so he challenged this idea that literature should be written in order to gain people in order to give good message uh, even in india you know, if you are you know uh, reading some other works like uh, the unmasking of colonial conquest something like that what is the intention behind introducing literature in india the intention behind introducing literature in india was to treat to teach indian people english behavior and english culture basically according to english people indians are you know savage they has they have to be civilized they are not in a good they don't know how to behave okay that's why they have to be civilized in order to civilize them the introduction of literature english literature in india happened okay that's a different story we will have some opportunity to discuss that in our coming classes so here oscar wilde's idea of art for art sake art for art sake means literature for literature sake if you are writing a poem it doesn't have any other intention other than itself okay means it is independent category literature is or art is independent you know it's you cannot evaluate an art by its function by its intention art is for art sake okay this is the slogan this is the watchword of this aesthetic movement so if you are writing according to this uh, scholars like you know oscar wilde the intention behind writing a poem is poem itself you no know, it's not necessarily you have to get people you have to teach them something so this is art for art's sake okay so uh, this is a smaller thing and uh, it is not part of your syllabus directly but indirectly you have to have a general understanding and in next class maybe after two days we will have an opportunity to discuss um the different genres of literature different forms of literature and what is the first form of literature all those things we will discuss in next class okay so we have simply gone through the word meaning of literature all right it that comes from latin word and in 18th century it is a you know a widely used term it has two meaning one is specific meaning specific meaning is to any imaginative writing poetry prose fiction and drama so in the expanded sense in the larger sense any writing in philosophy history science whatever means content does in matter but if it is written thing that you can call literature okay then functions of literature basically it is it was a management of feeling it is from the pain so here we have this idea of catharsis catharsis means you are getting a relaxation once watching a movie or a drama this term has uh, introduced by aristotle then uh, for example once a you know if you are experiencing some pain you are in order to manage that feeling you are writing something that is valmiki ramayana then didactic literature literature intended to instruct people about good or bad then aestheticism art for art sake oscar wilde and people like uh, oscar wilde argued that art doesn't have any other function other than itself okay so if you have any doubts you can ask in the group okay